Okay guys, we have our mast naked lying in the boatyard. What are we going to do with her? Stay tuned as we show you what we're going to do to bring this mast back to life. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode. We've come to the conclusion we are going to sand our mast and get it ready for Neuralac. Neuralac is a clear coat polymer that goes over the whole of the mast uh, after we've given it a sand down and a rough polish and it's pretty much just a sealer. Uh, we've spoke to a couple of people that have used it. It's there now about four years in with the product and they love it. So for us, it just simplifies things and it'll give us a mask that we can pretty much see if there's any problems. We can inspect our welds and just a simple approach. It's sanding time. Bella and I are gonna make our way downstairs where the mast is laid out ready for sanding. So we have some PPE for today. It is hot, but we have to put it on. We have a dust suit to start with. Second of all we have a respirator. Here it is. We're gonna wear goggles not just protective glasses because you get so much dust on you these just sit to your face pretty well and you eliminate so much dust getting in your eyes so we're gonna be using these. We don't have our protective coating for the mask at the moment. Once we've got our finish that we're gonna put on the mask and do a light rub down of the mask and that'll be our final prep which will be like with maybe a 600 and as soon as we've done that we'll apply our sealer straight over it. Bella and I for today is just going to be either an 80, 120 and then Bella follow up with like a 220, 240 something like that and just get it pretty much cleaned up ready for the final steps. Okay, so apart from the winches, these are the last two fittings on the mast and they were pretty sad. This is the boom bang and you can see a mass amount of corrosion here. Uh, half of these screws were just slipping in there so I'm going to have to tidy this up and see what we got and probably oversize the screws and tap some new threads in so that's good. And then the same with this one. This one wasn't as bad but Believe it or not, it did have um, nuts and bolt. Uh, it was actually bolts with nuts on the back. I don't know how they got them on. They got them on through this little hole, which is gonna be a nightmare for me, but I'm thinking I may just, again, oversize this and just tap some threads in it and uh, bolt it up. So we'll have a look at that more once that's cleaned up. We're down to here. This is just the last couple of meters of it. And uh, then we can get all that polished up. Once we flip it over to the other side, of course. We're here all winter. And we could have done this in the winter, but we did have an opportunity to rise with the rigging. Hence why we're doing it now in the summer. It is what it is. It is what it is. We couldn't miss an opportunity to get our rigging done and it did need doing. And all these little jobs need doing. We just don't want to be here any longer. We've got boatyard blues. We want to get back out in the water. Last bit, last bit. Push on through. You got this, baby. Oh, that looks like it was a lot of hard work. Too much hard work. A lot if of they, sweat. If they had the right sandblasting equipment here, we could have sandblasted this. They do have the sandblaster here, but it's really coarse media for the fishing boats they use here. And I spoke with a guy about two weeks ago that just done their mast and they had it sandblasted and their intention was to leave it raw. But after the sandblasting, it was so etched, the amount of sanding they would have had to do to get a, a reasonably smooth finish back um, was too much. So they instead had to paint their mast. So we decided just to sand it and uh, we'll go from there. It's a lot of bloody work. 
You're but, doing um, great job. Detailing. This is the first mask, pretty much done. Just going over it uh, with like a 220. I'm just going to give it a bit more of a tidy up and then we'll leave it until we have the um, sealer because the day before we do the sealing, we're going to go over it with like a 400, 600 and make it nice and shiny. It's got these bits to go. It's doing the final bits down the edges. And it's all done. It's done both sides. Just made the detail soon. I've gone over. Bloody and legend. The bulk off. Pretty good. You I did clean good. up the other side of the mask and I cleaned up all around these welds. There's no cracking. It all looks pretty good so far. I haven't done these yet, obviously. clean up around here and have a check all these welds and everything looks pretty good there's no cracks there's it all there's a couple of bits of corrosion here and there but all in all it looks pretty bloody good the stuff that was originally done on the boat is held up really well like all the tangs and that had a beautiful rubber divider between the mast and the stainless and they were perfect it was just all the add-ons that have been done over time that haven't had like duralac or or the compound that's been used is just worn away with age. It is twice as thick as a normal mask, so this definitely doesn't hurt taking a little bit off to clean it up. So we just, uh, Bella just cleaned up all the paint at this end because this is the inside part of the boat. And we're going to leave that painted. And that's where they've sanded to. He's just going to sand back this part and put the sealer on the end as well because that's right down the bottom it's not too bad yeah so i don't know what it looks like on the camera but it's it's just a little bit of surface corrosion any water and moisture that sits down the bottom over the years have gotten underneath the paint pretty good well once i run the um sander over that there's no inconsistency in the thickness here and now dad is on to the missing a life I lead in this city Hurrying to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am These are our furlers and both of them have seen better days but in particular dad was having trouble pulling apart our stay furler. Alright, it's a little bit noisy but the goal for today is we're going to strip back all this peeling paint, obviously common with paint and aluminium, that's what happens. Also, the electrolysis, the similar metals here, stainless steel on here, all needs to be rebonded. But apart from being rebonded, these are all old incandescent lights. These are so energy hungry. Uh, these are all going to be replaced with Lumitech spreader lights. So we're going to get rid of all this heavy drawer on the boat. Um, you minimise the drawer on the boat, you minimise the cable size, um, and you end up with a much more efficient light. And so we've chosen to go with Lumitech. Um, so we're going to clean these all up, we'll get them all um, sealed up, and then we'll put on the Lumitech lights and show you what they look like. Uh, pretty exciting. Not only the Lumitech lights are efficient, you can also change the colour on them too. So, so you can set the mood for any location, any time. Alright, so that's uh, the task for now. I'll get in, I'll remove all these lights, sand all these up. Until this happened. Yeah, the... I think the bearings... It's just stuff. Is that a hard light, this one? You want to finish sanding, just have a break. You don't need to break the sander. That's just all flogged out. All the plastic's just melted, I think. Yeah. 
And Mr. Fix It, Fix It. It's getting hot out here, that's all. It's done a lot of work. It's done a lot of sanding. Here's the mizzen. So he's only got to do fine details now of detailing it up. He's done all the bulk. Bella's over there detailing some of the, the little parts with the Dremel. Doing a great job there, darling. The bearing seized. Oh, it's hot. It's seized and that doesn't spin anymore. So when it seized, then it just started slipping in its housing and then it's just gotten all wobbly. It's pretty much stuffed. Pull all that off and waste time and I don't think it's worth it. Geez, it got hot quick though when that froze up. Do you love how they're protecting their headphones? <laughs> Get rather sweaty here in Mexico and I don't know if they're waterproof but we just didn't want them wrecked so that was our solution. <laughs> Ziploc bags. But we have another sander, so the fun continues. Preparation is 90% uh, there. Uh, both mast spreaders, everything's sanded, ready for nylac. So we're not going to do the final steps yet, like we said. We mentioned once we have the nylac product in our hands, which will be our next run up to Phoenix, and we'll pick that up. Then we'll do our final preparation and we'll seal these masts up. But all in all, they come up well. Yeah, can't wait to start putting these back together. So until next time, guys, stay tuned. Like, subscribe, you know what to do. Have a good day.